Hey guys, it's Cameron from Cameron's Tutorials here. I just wanted to share something interesting with you that uh, I came across in the last few weeks uh, while working with the little video player that I've been designing in Adobe Air. Um, as most of you know, Adobe Air only really supports uh, FLV and MP4 encoded with H.264. And this can be a, a, a big drawback when you want to uh, uh, support AVI or MOV or MKV or whatever. So I wanted to show you a quick workaround that uh, I've discovered uh, using FFmpeg uh, to transcode the video uh, and stream it into the Flash Player. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so as we get started here, you might notice that I'm actually running a Linux uh, system here. But if you're on Windows, uh, we should be able to get the same technique working. Uh, there'll be a few subtle differences which I'll mention as we go along here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download FFmpeg. So what I'll do is I'll go over to my browser here, and I'm just going to go to Google and search FFmpeg, and here it is, FFmpeg.org. So I'll go over to the download section here, and if you scroll down, um, we've got a section here for Linux builds, and then we also have a section for Windows builds. So if, I'll, if you take a look at this, if you are on a Windows system, uh, if it's a 64-bit system, just download the latest 64-bit version, or the 32-bit version for a 32-bit system. Once you download it, just unzip it and put it in a folder. You should, what you're looking for is the executable file. I believe it's called ffmpeg.exe. So track that file down and put it in a convenient spot that you can quite easily uh, navigate to uh, because we're going to have to navigate there using code. So because I'm on a Linux system here, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you how to get this running on Linux. Um, if I scroll down here, uh, I should see the PPA link here. If I just go ahead and highlight that and copy it, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my terminal. And I'm going to say sudo add apt uh, repository. And then I'm just going to paste that in there. And put in my password. <coughs> And it will add that to my repository. At this point, you're going to want to say sudo apt get update. And it will take a few minutes to update um, all, all your. So I've already have this installed, so I'm not actually going to do that. But this is the command you need to do to update all your repositories. And then at that point, you can type sudo apt get install ffmpeg. And that will install ffmpeg on your system. Um, but now that we've got ffmpeg installed, Let's go ahead and um, launch Eclipse, and we'll we'll get started making our little video player. So the first thing um, we need to do is obviously create a new project. I'll just make an action script project. This would work with Flex as well if we wanted to. It of course has to be a desktop application. It has to run Air because we're going to use the native process, and that only works in Air. So I'm just going to call it Video Player and I'm just going to use the Flex 4.5 that I have installed here and I'll click finish and it will create my project for me okay so here's the um, here's the first class that's going to be run when, uh, when we execute our application but I'm going to create a new folder here called com and then another folder inside that one called dolem and I'm going to now create a new class and this class is going to basically be the class that handles the native process and really does the bulk of the work, gets FFmpeg going and transcodes the video. So this is going to be our main class here. I'll just call it uh, play, call it play any video. <clears throat> That'll be fine. I'll click finish and that will create the class for us. So I'm going to delete the constructor method because we don't we don't actually need it in this case. And the first uh, the first method I want to create here uh, will be just, um, I, I suppose, just a, a function to just start the whole process off here. So I'll say public function, and I'll just call it play. And that's going to return void. And um, we're going to need to feed in some stuff into this function here. So the first thing that we're going to need to make this work is the actual file. Uh, which I'll just call ffmpeg, and this is the executable file that um, that's going to start ffmpeg as a native process, and I'm just going to data type that as a file. Next thing we're going to need is a video for the 
video to actually stream into. So I'll create a video like that. And the last thing I, I suppose would be the path to the video that we want to play. So we'll say video path and we'll make that a string. There we go. So <clears throat> Now we want these we want these variables these three variables that we've just created in here we want them to be accessible from outside of this function scope so I'm going to actually create some uh, private variables that will match this and then we'll assign them inside our play function there so I'll create that ffmpeg variable out here which will be a file uh, create another one called video which will be a video and of course I need to use Bar or else this whole thing won't work. There we go. And then I'll create a variable called video path, which will be a string. So once I've got that done, I can actually assign those in here. So I can say this ffmpeg equals ffmpeg. And I'll do the same thing with these other two. This video equals video. This dot video path equals video path. Done. Great. Okay, so now that that's done, um, the, the first thing I want to do basically to, to start this whole thing off is to just test right away whether or not the native process is going to work. Before we try and make it start, let's check to see if it's supported. And there's an easy way to do that. We just simply say if native process let me say dot is supported, so that will return true and execute whatever's in the if statement. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create an else statement as well. I'm just going to trace out uh, a statement just so if something goes wrong, we kind of know what's happening here. I'm just going to trace out uh, native process not supported, and then um, if it if it is supported, um, <clears throat> we need to set up our network connection so that we can actually essentially trick uh, the video into thinking that it's streaming video from from the internet so there's um if I open up my browser here I go over here I'm just going to search for action script reference there's a really great oops looks, oh that's right there anyway that's great so there's a nice website here that uh, allows you to kind of check out a lot of different things I mean if you're familiar with flash you've probably been here more than once but um, the first thing I'm going to search for here is a net connection. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll look up NetStream because that kind of covers everything. Let's go down to NetStream here <coughs> and uh, just scroll down to the examples. This is essentially what they're doing here. They're, they're setting up a net streaming uh, application here to stream in um, Flash video from the internet, from this, from this file here. So we're essentially going to do the exact same thing that they're doing here, um, and this is sort of where I've drawn most most of my code from. So the first thing we need to do is set up a net connection variable. So I'll set up a global one up here. And I'm just going to call it n connection, and that's going to be type net connection. Um, and we're also going to need eventually a net stream variable as well. So I'm just going to call it n stream. Now that we have those, um, I'm going to make it equal to a new net connection. And then I'm going to add an event listener to it. Uh, it's just a, uh, it's just going to be a net status event, which is right there. There we go. And I'll set up uh, a way to handle that. So I'll say net status handler. And then I am going to use the connect method here. And it's looking for a string, but I'm just going to pass in null for now. OK, great. So now if this, uh, to we need to create this function here. So I'm going to go private function, paste that in. And this needs to be able to handle the event, so we'll say event, and this is a net status event. There we go. That can return void. Okay, 